Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes. And to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with Amanda Martin. Amanda is the first UK approved the Click That Teaches instructor. She's been training horses since the early 2000s and has been teaching since the mid 2000s. Shortly after buying her first stallion, Amanda came across clicker training and immediately recognized that this would be a fantastic way to train her stallion. She headed out to the barn with the Click That Teaches book, a clicker in hand and a pocket full of treats, and made some wonderful discoveries. She'd learned that clicker training is incredibly powerful and that it is an effective communication tool for horses and handlers and that the horses responded with great enthusiasm. Now, thanks to Amanda and the Click That Teaches program, horse owners all over the UK and the EU and Europe are able to build a solid relationship with their horse where the horse is a willing and enthusiastic partner in their own training. Through clinics, lessons, and online training courses, she's also helping horse owners everywhere discover that clicker training can help them create happy, eager horses who love to train. As a result, she's also creating very happy horse owners who love spending time with their horses. Amanda also teaches clicker training at universities and colleges throughout the UK and is also a faculty member for the Equine Clicker Conference in the UK. Welcome to the show, Amanda. I'm delighted to have you. Thanks, Val. Thanks for inviting me to the show. You're welcome. I love it. Uh, let's give people your website so they can find out a little more about your work um, right up front, and then we're going to dive into what we want to talk about today. So what, what's your website? Um, let's see, where do you want to send them? Uh, the website is the W's, smarthorses.co.uk. Okay, so www.smarthorses dot co dot uk and smart is spelled a little differently i know you uk people must spell spell differently than we americans <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's got two a's in it yeah, it does it has two a's s-m-a-a-r-t yeah, and go ahead that's it yeah uh-huh yep s-m so it's actually an acronym for um for some of the products that i have um so it's s-m-a-a-r-t horses.co.uk right so s-m-a-a-r-t h-o-r-s-e-s dot c-o dot u-k awesome so that's where people can find out more awesome okay so i am i'm so loving your story about your stallion Uh, let's help people understand what clicker training is um how you got into it um you know i know it was relatively new uh when you first began playing with it um so tell us give us some foundation so tell us how to how to understand what this actually is so clicker training is uh it's a way to say yes to your horse when they got the right answer Mm -hmm. um it's Ah. uh it really um, it engages the horses in the training. Um, if you're saying yes to them for things that you want them to do, then they're more prepared to offer you more of that. So instead of having to um, get them to do things from reins and from aids and things like that, then we can actually get them to offer us behavior, and we can then take that behavior, we can mold it and shape it into what we want it to be, and it, it speeds up the training as well when we're doing it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, 
in some ways, it changes what we do with the training slightly and that we break things down into very, very small steps. And a lot of people think that makes it slower, but actually you get to your end goal a lot faster. Ah, good um, point. So I, I actually stumbled across clicker training when, uh, when, as you said, I bought my first stallion. Um, he was actually my first horse as well, so a bit of a baptism of fire there. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> went out, got myself a young stallion. He was 18 months old, and oh, wow. my experience with stallions up until that point had been that they're the horse at the back of the yard that nobody's allowed to go and touch because they bite and they're aggressive and they're isolated all the time. And mm. and I really didn't want that for my horse. Uh, mm -hmm. He was coming from an environment where he lived in a herd, and I really wanted him to continue to be that social horse and be out with other horses. So I figured there had to be a way that I could train him that he would be a nice horse to be around and that people didn't know he was a stallion until they were told he was a stallion. Wow. So I went went digging through the internet and stumbled across Alexandra Curland and she was the lady who pioneered clicker training in the horse world. Mm -hmm. And she really worked through what she was doing. She really studied the work and made sure that what she was going to bring to people was not just, um, here's a clicker, here's some treats, off you go and play. She was very cognizant of the fact that we're working with animals that can be quite dangerous. So we need to make this as safe as possible. Mm. So she needed to make sure that what she was going to bring to people was going to keep them safe, that she had all that built into it. So she has a program put together that you can follow step by step and I looked at that and thought, well, I've got a young horse, I've got this stallion, so this looks like a perfect way to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, I did look at other methods, but this one just it jumped out to me. I liked the fact that this was positive. It was a way of saying yes to the horses. Um, and, and so I went ahead with it. And years later, here I am having a conversation with you about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is so cool. I, you know, I have to tell you a, a personal story of mine. Um, I the last horse that I had in my life, Taylor, who's a Russian Arabian, um, gorgeous, wonderful, smart, brilliant horse. Um, I decided to start playing with clicker training, and uh, and I started playing with it. I, I didn't have probably as much support as you did, um, but I had my bag of treats and my clicker, you know, the little uh, cricket noisemaker, um, and I decided to teach my horse to fetch. And so okay. uh, the reason I wanted to teach him that is that I can be quite clumsy and I t t tend to drop things. <laughs> and he was 16 two hands, and uh, I'm a short person, uh, five foot three, and it was hard for me to climb on and off of him, especially out in pasture or out in the field or, you know, out, out on the, the road. So, uh, you know, on trails and stuff, and so sometimes I would drop my stuff, and I thought, you know, <laughs> if I if Taylor could simply pick that up and hand it to me, I wouldn't have to get off. So I'm essentially very lazy. <laughs> so I thought, what I'll do is teach him teach him to you know to fetch, to pick things up, and to bring them to me, and and that was the game that we played. And I have to say that he loved the game. He would choose to play the game all day long if I would just stay there and play with him. Uh, so yeah. I'm so excited to hear what you've done with it. So, okay. So um, so it, it, so how have things changed? How did that um, – what happened next? I want to hear what happened. What, so tell me more about your stallion and your horse. What, what happened next? Uh, well, when I started this workout, it was, uh, it was really new, and there, there really weren't very many people around me um, clicker training at all. So initially it did feel like I was on my own doing this work and I just had this book that I was following um, but I managed to find some clinics in the UK with Alexandra which was fantastic to actually see this work being done live and it was a bit kind of oh that's how I'm supposed to do it okay mm -hmm. um, and the first clinic that I went to with her I actually took my young stallion to and um, I saw something absolutely amazing in him at that very first clinic that this was, apart from coming to me from Denmark, this was his first trip away from home. Wow. And he um, he was in a, he, he was kept really nicely in that he wasn't isolated, which is exactly what I wanted for my horse. Mm -hmm. We went to this, this yard and he was stabled next to the other boys and um, he was coping perfectly well until one of the other horses um, was taken out and my horse had an emotional meltdown. Ah. And... 
we, you know, at that point in time, I, I didn't have the tools in my training toolbox to do much about it because he was dangerous to go in with. Mm-hmm. Um, he was pinging back and forward, and at 18 months old, well, at that time, actually, he was two because I'd been doing this for about six months by the time I found this clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, he was about 15 feet at that time, so he was a big horse already, and that mm-hmm. moving around quite fast was just too dangerous to go in with. Mm-hmm. So Alex decided to... Uh, that she couldn't leave him like that. Um, She had to go and do something with him. And I saw the most powerful thing that I've ever seen in horse training. And we didn't touch him. We didn't go in with him. We we all stayed outside. All we used was a clicker and some treats. And I could reach in and hand him the treats into the stable. And this horse calmed down within just a few minutes. Mm. And Alex used uh, free shaping which is where you shape a behavior, so you change a behavior, you change the reaction to something by showing the horse that there's another way to do this, there's another way to behave, and I will reinforce you for doing that. Mm -hmm. So if you can stop rushing about and you can start to pay attention to me, I can reinforce you for that. So she actually taught him to back up. He was already having to pull back slightly, to ping from one side of the stable to the other. He had to pull back slightly, and she clicked the second he pulled back. And I would then hand the treat into him. And within four clicks, he was completely locked on to Alexandra, mm-hmm. so focused on her, offering the backup mm-hmm. to the point where he backed up all the way around the stable. And there was actually a kind of run-in part at the back of the stable, which mm-hmm. could take him away from the other mm-hmm. horses. Mm-hmm. And he even figured out how to back up through the space into that. And he went into the back, lowered his head, took a deep breath, and came back out like a totally different horse. Wow. And that was just with a clicker and some treats. Wow. And it just, it, that absolutely had me sold on this. And, mm. you know, if, if we had videoed that, that would be the most powerful piece of video to show anybody just how amazing this training is. Wow. Um, but like I said, at that time, you know, I really felt like I was, you know, fairly much on my own with this. There weren't many people around who were doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, you know, things are really changing over the years. Um, I'm seeing a lot more people who are interested in this, a lot more people who are really looking into it and trying to find out a bit more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Internet's been amazing for that because people can go on the Internet and can compare these training methods mm-hmm. and they can see, is that for me, is this not for me? And they don't have to commit to anything. They can just go and find out whatever information they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, things are, are definitely changing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I moved to Scotland, which was really interesting because I discovered that Scotland was about five years behind England in uh, in training. Oh my God! <laughs> and nobody had heard nobody had heard of clicker training, so I was almost back to square one. So that was when I really started taking on the role of kind of well, I'd like to educate people about this because you know I feel like people are really missing out on something. They're missing yeah. out on this amazing relationship they can have with their horse. Yeah. Um, you know, they're missing out on the horse being a part of the training and the horse actually telling them that, you know, I enjoy doing this or mm-hmm. I don't enjoy doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really got into uh, to teaching people about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also had the privilege then over these years of watching how clicker training has advanced, that we've taken it from this simple starting point of, you know, where you were with targeting because that fetch starts mm-hmm. out with targeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have taken that to be really detailed, really sophisticated training that over the years our understanding of clicker training and what it is and how we can use it has has evolved so much that we can take something as simple as targeting and we can make it incredibly sophisticated. Um, Uh, explain, Explain the term targeting so people follow along what that means. So targeting is how we get the horses started with the clicker because we need to teach them what the click means. When, mm-hmm. when we start out, the click is completely meaningless to the horse. It's yeah. just another noise in the environment. Yes. So what we want to do is we want to pair it up with the reinforcer. The reinforcer is the treat. Mm-hmm. We do that by asking the horse to do something. So we hold out a simple target for them. I use just little cones that you can squash up and put mm-hmm. in your pockets and things. Mm-hmm. You hold it really close to the horse's nose, and when they bump into it, you click and you give them the treat. And you repeat that until you see, with with most of the horses, you see this kind of light bulb moment where they kind of go, oh, really? You just want me to touch the target? Mm -hmm. Um, 
and then they immediately they, you can see then at that point they're actively seeking out the target they're actively going and bumping it with their nose mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just doing it by accident so that's targeting we teach them to touch a target and from that target you can do so many other things because then we can once they understand that I want you to touch something we can start to get them to follow the target so we can get them uh, teaching them trailer loading mm -hmm. we can get them to touch feet onto a target so we can start with things like ground time um, body awareness if your horse understands where its feet are that's really powerful um, we can um, ask them to target body parts so instead of us asking them to bring their nose to touch a target I can say bring your ear so if I need to trim a horse's ear hairs or they've got something stuck in their ear or medical stuff that I need to do with them that you know, I need to put drops in their eyes or something like that then mm -hmm. I can actually get them bring that body part to me mm -hmm. and I can then do whatever I need to do without it being stressful for the horse because they're voluntarily doing that for me yeah so that simple behavior of targeting on you know that we start out with with this touch a little cone mm -hmm. just becomes really powerful powerful way to train uh, it's yeah, not really the only tuning that we yeah. have but it's one of them um yeah so yeah that's um okay that's a, a long way to tell you about the start of clicker training. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It's a wonderful story. I love it. Um, and I think you hit on something really important I want to bring out for a little, for everybody, uh, for our listeners, which is the, the concept of voluntary. You know, it's that, it's connected to, and, and I'm thinking it's connected to goodwill. Uh, it's connected to, you know, the, the horse or, and not just horses, right? We're using clicker training for all animals. Uh, really, uh, dogs, uh, cats, I mean, you can use it for pretty much any animal, including humans. <laughs> we could use Absolutely, it for humans. Yes. Um, but the point is, is that instead of us pushing, pulling, or forcing an animal to do something that we want them to do, we invite them to figure out what we want and to offer that uh, because they want to, because they volunteer it because they're in control of their behavior and they can choose to do what we are inviting them to do. And that turns traditional training approaches kind of on their ear. You know, it, just, it changes oh, the whole dynamic of the relationship because and, and the game. it changes the emotions from the horse. It yes. completely turns around the emotions. Instead of them, I'm going to make you do that. And I can ask so politely, mm -hmm. can you do this for me? But if I'm if I'm training traditionally, then there's always that that meaning behind it of I'm asking you to do it, but at the end of the day, I can make you. Yes. And I, and I can if I'm using traditional methods, I can, and that's why I don't do that because I don't like the emotion that goes with that from the horse. If I mm -hmm. have that little thing at the end where it's but I can make you do it, it just brings out a different look in the horse that I don't like. Mm -hmm. I want them to do it because they find it fun to do it, that they they enjoy doing it. Um, and then if they don't do it, I, I've got to look at why they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. That both of my horses are taught to put, um, they put the bridle on themselves. So I hold the bridle up, they bring their head over, they put it in the, the bridle, they open the mouth, put it over the bit. And I, at that point, and, and I actually say this out loud, I say, are you ready? And if they're ready for it, the head stall to go over their head, then they keep their head there. If they're not, then they take their head away. Mm -hmm. So on and, and one of my horses, he's, my youngest one is my overachiever and he just, he loves doing things that he thinks are really cool. And he thinks putting his bridle on is really cool. And I can rattle the bit at the top of the field and he will come at a flat out gallop and he mm -hmm. will virtually land on the bit. It's just, it's, if you don't know what he's doing and, and if you don't know he's safe, then it would really frighten you. So I have actually managed this behavior a bit better because he was getting a bit too enthusiastic about it. So... um <laughs> One day, they said, I held the bit up for him, or held the, the bridle up for him. He put his mouth over the bit. Um, he got everything ready, and I said to him, are you ready? And he, up until that point, had never taken his head away. And one day, he took his head away when mm -hmm. I said, are you ready? Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, maybe I did something. Maybe I, you know, wasn't clear in what I was asking of him, you know, and I kind of ran through all the kind of regular things that I run through. Why, why did he suddenly change his mind? Mm -hmm. So I asked him again just to see, is there another clue in there that will help me figure this out? Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't see anything else. But, you know, the, 
asked him again, and exactly the same thing happened again. This little horse that loves having the bridle put on all of a sudden said, hmm, not today. Mm-hmm. So I was really stumped, and I thought, well, I'm not going to make you do it, because that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. It's up to me now to find out why you didn't do that. So I immediately got on the phone to the dentist, and she came out a couple of days later. I had a look in his mouth. And at the time he was, I think he was about four at the time, mm-hmm. and he had cats, and his baby cats were stuck. Mm. And the bit was actually, when it was fully in his mouth, it was actually knocking against the cats, so it was painful for him. Mm. Mm-hmm. So he was telling me from that, going from one day to saying, this is okay, I love doing this, to the next mm-hmm. day, no, not today. And he was telling me that I can no longer volunteer to do this for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, for me, is enormous that, First off, he he volunteers to do it anyway, and secondly, he's got the confidence to say to me that today I can't do this for you because I know you're going to go and find out why I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the emotions that I want from the horses. I want them to be confident about what they're doing, and I want them to be confident about the fact that I'm listening. This is not a one-way conversation. It's Mm -hmm. absolutely a two-way conversation, Mm -hmm. and they have ownership over this stuff. Yeah. And that creates the most remarkable, amazing relationships. When you have a two-way conversation and your horse or your animal can trust you to pay attention and to listen to them. Because, you yeah. know, I think this, I'm just thinking of the tragedy that happens all the time. And, you know, and I work with a lot of people all over the world personally, you know, helping them solve problems like this one. And, you know, and so they're, why won't my horse take the bit? My, you know, my horse is fussy. I, you know, forcing the bridle on his head and he doesn't act happy i mean he's you know clenching it in his teeth he's running away with me blah 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 and and so you know all this all this you know terrible stories um and then when we talk with them you know we have a terrible tooth problem or i've got this pain in my head or it's you know blah, blah, uh, something you know there's always something horses and animals do things for a reason there's always a reason why they're doing things and i love the approach of if your I would say if if your horse isn't having fun and wanting to play with you, then something is very very wrong, and it needs to be addressed. Yeah. You know, otherwise you have an enormous being, uh, you know, twelve hundred pound or, or so, um, who is infinitely more powerful than you, and if they are pushed beyond their tolerance or their limits and forced beyond, you know, what you know what they can do, then they lash out they hurt their push you know they they, they're just trying to communicate they're just trying to tell us like like your horse did so brilliantly your wonderful overachiever um i can't keep the bridle in my mouth because it hurts my mouth you know it hurts my teeth it it you know it's not okay with me if you if you hadn't listened you know what i mean what would have happened it would have been a really ugly awful story so thank you so much for bringing that one of one of us would have yeah, one of us would have got hurt at the end of the day, but the thing that would have been damaged the most would have been my relationship with the horse. Correct. That he wouldn't, he wouldn't have trusted me again with things like that. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what's important to me. It's the, you know, it's the emotions that go behind all of this. I can absolutely change the horse's behaviour. You know, I can easily do that with training. What I want is that the emotions go with it. Yes. You know, they have yeah. to come as a package. Right. Yeah. Oh, and I'm so glad you brought up the point of trust because if we don't have trust in a relationship where they can trust us and we can trust them, then we don't have much of a relationship, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's so, no different to a relationship with a person that, you know, if they do something to damage our trust, then, you know, we find that difficult to build up again. Um, yeah. There's a, a, a wonderful um, kind of way that we can think about relationships and it's like bank accounts. Um, you you make withdrawals and you make deposits. Mm-hmm. The aim is always to have your your bank balance in the black. You don't want it in the red because as soon as it's in the red, you're in an uphill battle to try and repair that and get yourself yeah. back on track. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same with relationships that we must put in bigger deposits than the withdrawals that we're taking out. Yeah. So that you know when we do need to do something where it's you know horse, this is this is non-negotiable today. The vet is coming. Because mm-hmm. you need to have this done, and it's you know you have to trust me. You absolutely have to trust me. Mm-hmm. If my bank balance is close to zero, you know my relationship bank balance is down near zero, then he's going to say, well, you know, hold on, I don't trust that you're not going to put us into the red. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas if I'm way in credit, 
mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. if I take that, that little deposit out of that day by saying the vet absolutely has to do this procedure, mm-hmm. um, then it's made a tiny dent in the relationship. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all about keeping it built up and um, right. not all going in the right direction. Right, right. I love it. Um, Amanda, what else can you do with clicker training? I, we've talked about trailer loading and bridling yourself and, you know, and uh, things like that. Uh, give us some more ideas about what else can be done with clicker training. Oh, can wow. anything you can do be done? Absolutely. You can do absolutely anything you want to with clicker training. If you can dream it up, you can train it. Give, give um, us some examples. So, I mean, I, I shared the one about, you know, uh, teaching my horse to fetch. Uh, and by the way, I the other point was uh, I wanted to change our cone pattern, our riding pattern, without having to yeah. dismount and, and actually physically move the cones myself. <laughs> so I thought that I would teach him to, you know, just pick them up with his teeth and we would carry them and redo them. You know, he would do that that way. <laughs> Again, That's very fantastic. lazy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so what else can you do? I mean, it, it's not just about... Uh, funny games like that. What else can you do with clicker? Give us some ideas. Well, that's a very practical application for it, though, is changing the cones around, you, you know, without guessing off. You know, when you when you have a big horse like that, then that's actually quite practical. Thank um, you. And one I of the things so. that I do teach people to do is, you know, if you if you drop something when you're out riding, then, you know, by all means, get your horse to pick it up for you. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I feel better. I don't do. feel quite as, as yeah. lazy. That was actually smart. <laughs> I love it. So, so what else? I mean, is this good for dressage or hunter jumpers or raining or I mean, what 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 else? What other sorts of for everyone? Yeah, it's it's good for absolutely every discipline. It's good for um, so dressage. I mean, some of the things I've been teaching uh, my older horse, the the stallion, who's um, he's only eight. He's not particularly old. Um, I've been teaching him haunches in, shoulders in. things like that and we've been teaching it one foot at a time he's so body aware because of the clicker training because he's done this from such an early age he uh, he will actually pick up one foot and you know I can click that one and say yep that's the right foot that's the right foot and then he says well, do you want me to move it to the inside to the outside mm-hmm. and and we'll go through the process that way and it's amazing how quickly then he puts it all together and all of a sudden you know within five minutes we've got punches in um, you know, teach all the you know the component parts. That I'd like you to bend this way. And say, okay, you want to bend that way. So he'll offer the bend, and then he'll offer the foot one at a time, and um, and we just build it up. And um, so we can use it for things like that, uh, mm-hmm. which is fairly high level dressage mm-hmm. stuff that we're starting to get into there. That mm-hmm. then evolves into things like half pass, and mm-hmm. um, we can um, use it for um, trick training which is, is always good fun. And some horses that are fairly emotionally damaged, yeah. sometimes the, 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 the ways that they've been asked to do everything in their life is so damaged by previous people that you can't get in there because everything you ask them, you just go, well, I think that is horrible and I'm not going to do it and I'm going to react. And, and you can't get into them to start to change the emotions. And sometimes... Um, you know, there's, there's one example. It's actually a horse that Alexandra Carland work with, worked with. Um, he appears on one of her DVDs, mm-hmm. where um, again he was a stallion and he'd been so badly treated that he just could not tolerate people around him at all. Mm. And the girl who took him on, um, she accessed his fun emotions, his his the, the, the kind of non-aggressive emotions, she went in there with trick training. Let's do something you have never done in your life before mm-hmm. and let's play with tricks. Mm-hmm. And that's how she turned this horse around. Mm-hmm. Um, he went from attacking everyone to this really placid horse who, who enjoyed working with people. Mm-hmm. Um, so tricks are, um, you know, everyone kind of looks at them and says, well, what would you use them for? What would you... You know, what, what application does that have in life? And, you know, for some of these horses, it's, it, we absolutely need the tricks to bring out the fun side. Mm-hmm. So one of my horses um, gets a, a hula hoop and he picks it up in his mouth and he flips it round his head so that it lands round his neck. He <laughs> thinks that's fantastic. He just <laughs> thinks that's the best behavior ever. Um, okay. And it's actually so powerful for him that I can use that instead of a click. I can actually use that as a reinforcer for some of the other behaviors because he enjoys it so much. <laughs> if you can give me a really good attempt at this other behavior, then we can go and play with the hula hoop. And you know, it, it absolutely improves the, the training. Um, yeah. 
he also plays with a bicycle horn, um, oh. a musical keyboard, things like that. <laughs> and these are things you can just do on the nights when you get to your barn and you think, do you know, I'm really tired from work today and I just don't know what to do or the weather outside is miserable and I don't want to go out there. Mm-hmm. We can start to do things like this that just bring out the fun side and get us laughing with our horses because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't do that. You know, they don't laugh at the horses, and they have amazing, uh, an amazing sense of humour. They really do. Um, so, yeah, any discipline, um, trick training, uh, problem behaviours, we can use it to deal with um, horses that have behaviours that we just don't like, mm-hmm. like biting. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked with a, a Shetland pony um, a couple of years ago who had been biting for 10 years, mm-hmm. and he was fairly nasty with it. He actually broke somebody's hand. Um, yeah, for a Shetland, that's fairly impressive. Yeah. Um, and he'd, he'd been practicing this behavior for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And we just cleaned up what the, the handlers were doing. We had a look at you know what was causing the horse to react this way. And within a week and a half, we had this horse who was able to be fed by children without mm. a problem. Wow. Um, so... You know, it's, it really is that whole all-encompassing, you know, whatever you want to train, you can train it as long as you know, um, you know, especially if it is problem behaviours. We need to, we tend to focus on, on problem behaviours when we've got them. Mm-hmm. We forget that I actually want something else in its place. So it's, if we've got a horse that bites, I don't want it to bite, but I can't train it really not to bite. I need to give it something else to do. So I actually need to think of, well, what do I want, to, want it to do instead of biting? Yeah. That I can train for mm-hmm. because that then, here's my behavior. I can break it down step by step. I can create myself a training plan and I can put that in place. And that's what we did with this little horse is that, mm-hmm. you know, it's I, the only way that you can stop a horse doing something is to, start to use punishers and things whereas you're saying well okay instead of that I want him to be able to stand politely and show emotional control around food and that's mm-hmm. what we trained for and that's what we got mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so we definitely need to focus on what we do want from the horse yes. and not focus on what we don't want yeah I know that's uh, one of the most powerful things I can do with my clients is to shift them to focus to what they do want, and many of them don't even know. <laughs> all they, they, all, know. They, it's like they got stuck in the in the problem, so, along with their animal, and they they don't even know what they really want. They just think they want that behavior to stop. But no, yeah. you need to tell the, your animal what you really do want. What what is the positive? What's the reward for you know? For um, for behaving differently, what's what do, what do yeah. you want? That's a critical part of of the entire process in any relationship, animal or human. Don't you think? Yeah. Well, it gives direction to everything because if if you don't yeah. have that, then you don't really have direction. Because if you're focused on the behavior that you don't want, yeah. then all you're trying to do is stop that behavior. Now you can absolutely stop it. Yeah. But yeah, you have no control over what comes in its place. Yeah. So it could yeah. get worse. You right. just don't know. Whereas if you're focusing on the behavior that you do want, then you can actually direct it very quickly to to the end goal that you're aiming for without having to go down other roads of saying, well, it's not that one, it's not this one, it's not that one, and I don't want this one. And because as soon as we're saying, no, it's not that one, no, it's not that one, no, it's still not that one, mm-hmm. at some point the horse is going to say, and I've seen people do this as well when I train with them, with, um, we do human horses, which is really good fun. Mm-hmm. And we actually play the, the training game with human horses, and you play the game with no. So it's a bit like the hot and cold game. You're getting hotter, you're getting colder, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And instead, mm-hmm. we play with no because that's generally how people train the horses. Is yeah. I train with no, yeah. um, and we get them to train another person by only saying no. And I've actually seen people sit down in the middle of arena and have a temper tantrum because yeah. they are saying, well, you know, everything I try is absolutely wrong. So what's the point in trying anymore? Mm-hmm. And I see that in the horses as well. They hear no so yeah. many times that they just say, well, why bother? Right. Um, and it's, right. instead of that, we can say yes, and we can really direct them. And when, if we add in, you know, the use of um, pressure and release as guidance mm-hmm. and, and help them to get to the right answer without giving them the right answer, then we can speed up the process even more and make it even more powerful training. 
Um, the only caveat I put around pressure and release is that when you apply pressure, it has to be in the form of guidance, and it never escalates. Because yeah. as soon as it escalates, we get back to that thing that I was talking about earlier of, I'm asking you, but at the end of this, I can make you do it. Mm -hmm. So it never, ever escalates that we never get into the realms of, I can make you do this. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So <clears throat> is it possible to create a badly behaved horse if you don't really know what you're doing or you don't do it correctly? Absolutely. And that goes for <laughs> any training. Yeah, that's true. If you okay. don't apply training correctly, regardless of what it is you're doing, you can end up with something that you don't want. Mm -hmm. And then people start to get into the, the labels of it's, badly behaved, it's opinionated, it's dominating, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And then you get all the helpful suggestions of, you know, you need to start to be the leader and dominate your horse and, you know, and those kind of things. But mm -hmm. these emotive labels that we put on things. Um, so, yes, absolutely, it's it's possible for things to go wrong. Yeah. And okay. when people get started yeah. with clicker training, it, it can be really overwhelming um, they're learning so much stuff because, you know, I've given them, they've got a horse, they've got a lead rope, they've mm -hmm. got treats, they've got a clicker, they've got a target. <laughs> and they're going, oh, mm -hmm. I don't get two hands. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be, you know, it can be really overwhelming. And that, yeah. on top of that, your horse suddenly goes, I read the book two years ago and you're just catching up. And I'm really <laughs> enthusiastic about this. <laughs> so you're it's not a quiet horse. But it's suddenly going, I know the answer, and it's, you know, it's a bit like Shrek at the back of the, the video in, in the movie, where he's jumping up and down saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. And, and the horse is that, you've got this person that's, that's, you know, all thumbs, and they can't figure out what they're supposed to be doing with the target and the treats, and uh, and the horse is going, come on, I figured this out, will you play with me? Um, so that, you know, the horses can get frustrated, and then you can start to see things that you don't want creep into the training um, and that's another reason that we actually work with human horses as well. Mm -hmm. Let's take the horse out of the equation so that we don't wreck the horse. Mm -hmm. Let's go and practice this stuff with a human in front of you where we can slow things down, we can rewind, we can freeze frame, we can set up particular situations that we want that person to learn body mechanics around, like how do I move, how do I change what I'm asking of the horse or what I'm doing in response to the horse. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So there's lots of advantages to take the horse out the equation. Um, let's figure out the mechanics first and let's go back to the horse. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden things change. The horse is saying, I'm, yeah, I'm with you or going at the right speeds. You're keeping up with me because <laughs> mm -hmm. they think they're leading the dance. Mm -hmm. um, and when we do get started with the, um, with the click the teachers clicker training that, that I do, Mm -hmm. um, we've got six foundation lessons that we follow. Okay. And we teach them usually in a particular order because that's the horses mostly need them in this in this particular order. Um, some need them slightly differently. And again, we come back to some of the abused horses and you know, kind of emotionally um, needing different things from us. But generally, we follow the, the foundation lessons in the same order. And we start off with targeting. And the second lesson is, um, we call it the grown-ups are talking, but it's basically, can you stand next to me politely and not mug me for food? Now that my pockets are stuffed full of food, I need you to have some emotional control around the food. And those are nearly always the first two lessons that we teach the horses. Um, they're called foundation lessons because they are the foundations that we build everything else on top of. Ah. If the foundation lessons are shaky, everything else is going to be shaky that you build on top of that and it can quite easily fall down. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. So the foundation lessons are really important um, and they're really about teaching the horses good emotional and physical balance. Mm. When we teach emotional balance, we improve physical balance. When we improve physical balance, we improve emotional balance. So they actually feed into each other and you can build that up really quickly. And what you get when you've got a horse that's really well emotionally and physically balanced, that is a really impressive horse to work with. Wow. It's quite a different feel when you've got a horse like that that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Oof. I love this. Uh, so that's how you would prevent a horse from getting mouthy and pushy about 
about food because I know a lot of traditional trainers they're really reluctant they they don't like to use food in their training because they get you know pushy yeah. um, so that would be the foundational step to teach them um, <clears throat> that they get food when they get the right answer and the right answer in some cases is to be emotionally and mentally balanced <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Food okay. and training is a really interesting thing because obviously I hear this all the time: is you know, when you're going to put the food away and stop bribing the horse and uh-huh, yes. all that. Kind of thing, you know, and it's and it's it starts out about the food, um, and mm-hmm. there's some really interesting research out there that um, I, I won't bore you with science because I, I I love the science behind all this stuff. But I won't bore you yeah. too much with it. <laughs> um, but there is scientific research out there that shows that once the animals understand what the the clicker training is about. Um, that it really is about problem solving, that yeah. they actually, the pleasure centers in their brain activate when they're problem solving, not when they hear the click. So it's actually in the problem solving part of it. So they're getting a, a kick out of actually figuring out what it is that we want. Once they've got the right answer, they just go, oh, yeah. great, right, the food on the, on the go. Let me get back to the problem solving again. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're enjoying the most. Um, I love so that. food is, is really interesting that, you know, this training is actually not about the food, but we do need to train the horses about the food. Um, and, you know, as I said, so many people say, you know, we don't use food in the training. Um, you know, it creates mouthy horses or the horse is already mouthy around food. Yeah. Um, and if that was if that was a horse that was afraid of something, you know, if they were afraid of a, a piece of tarpaulin or something, mm-hmm. we wouldn't remove all tarpaulin from the world and never you know, never take it to the horse and let the horse see it. We would actually go and take the horse to the tarpaulin and say, well, let's go and figure this out. Mm-hmm. Let's go and see that it's not scary. But for some reason with food, people do the opposite and say, well, we just won't hand feed it. Instead of saying, well, let's train it about hand feeding yeah. and let's make it safe and let's make sure it's not messy. Right. They they just remove it. So we do the opposite. Wow. <laughs> and we say, Let's go and teach this horse emotional control around food. Yeah. And you can take it to the point where, um, you know, you can, you can teach dogs to, um, you put their dinner down and you tell them to sit and you tell them to wait. And they wait until they get the cue that allows them to eat their food. Well, we yeah. can do exactly the same with horses. Mm-hmm. And that's really powerful when you see horses doing that. Um, yeah. You know, when I was younger and um, I worked in a, in a riding school, and when it came to feed time, there was door kicking, there was <laughs> yeah. racket everywhere, <laughs> and, you know, it was just mayhem around feed times. And mm-hmm. with some of the horses, you, you didn't even open the door, you would just drop the bucket in over the top because that was the safest thing to do. Yeah. Um, instead, of, you know, instead of that, we can actually teach the horses that you know, when I open this door, I would like you to take a couple of steps back and I would like you to wait until I manage to get your football on the ground. Mm-hmm. And then when I give you a particular cue, you can come forward and have your food. Um, so we're not saying to them, you're not having it. We're just saying emotional control. Yes. And yes, exactly. when they own that emotional control, boy, it's powerful. And they love it. They get so proud of themselves. They really do. You can see them just grinning from the inside out. They just mm-hmm. they absolutely love that stuff. Yeah, it, it's so cool. It's so cool when when they get that they can figure it out, they can problem solve, they can choose, you know, their what they want to do. Then all of a sudden you're in a whole different arena. I mean, literally, you're in a whole different ball game. It's yeah. it's it's almost it's magical. You know, it's just so much yeah. fun for for everybody. It's you know, it's it's um it's just fun. So Amanda, what would you like people to do next? What if somebody wants to get started uh with clicker training with their horse or if they have another animal they would like to play with, um what what would you recommend for them to do next? I think you have some good stuff here. Yeah, there's uh well there's a whole support network out there for um, people who want to clicker train. Um, obviously, I, I follow the click that teaches clicker training. It's constantly evolving and growing, and mm-hmm. um, there's always more information available. Um, mm-hmm. There are lots of um, clicker trainers who are involved with the click that teaches that offer lessons and clinics, myself being one of them, obviously, if people are in oh, the UK. Okay. okay. Um, and um, through that, there uh, there's a lot of support material as well. There's three books in that um, program. There's 18 DVDs, which is a huge oh. number of, of DVDs for a training program. Wow. Um, and they're all packed full of information. I mean, I, I still go back and watch them. Um, wow. Some of the you know the earlier ones, and I you know I'm watching them the fourth and fifth time. 
mm-hmm. and I still see more information pop out. And mm-hmm. I think, God, you know, I'd either forgotten about that or, mm-hmm. you know, my brain wasn't ready to hear that bit of information that time round. Right, right. Um, so there's, you know, there's lots of places to go for information about clicker training. Okay. Um, you know, people, no matter where they are, can contact me. I'm always happy to talk about clicker training cool. um, and how to help people. Um, I help people from afar all the time. There, okay. there are a few horses that I've never met, mm-hmm. but I've managed to help them with uh, with behavior problems. Like mm-hmm. there was a horse that um, unbelievably couldn't be caught for four and a half years. Wow. Nobody could catch this horse. And... He uh, he lived in I think it was like a 16 acre field or something like that mm-hmm. with a whole herd of horses. And mm-hmm. if you wanted him in, they would have to herd up all the horses, bring them up to the gate, and pick him out, open the gate, push him through the gate. They couldn't put a head collar on him. They couldn't catch him that way. They had to just herd him and steer him into the barn mm-hmm. and into his stall, and that was how they would catch him. Mm-hmm. And wow. um, so I never never met this horse. Still haven't met this horse. And about a year and a half ago, I helped his handler. Um, just with email, and within two weeks, he was the first horse at the gate when her car arrived, <laughs> and he would stand there and wait for her, um, <laughs> head collar on and into the stable with her. It was, uh-huh. uh, and, you know, like I said, never saw, still haven't seen the horse. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so cool. All right, yeah. so um, so how would they um, get the uh, click that teaches? And I think, um, let's see, there's a clicker training college, uh, there's an online course, right? Uh, ClickerTrainingCollege.com. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, so that's my online training. So if people can't get to my clinics and they want to train with me, then I offer online training. Um, it's a great way to, to learn. There's lots of videos in it and um, lots of material where you can go off and you know point you in different directions to go and look at different things to contrast and um, see good examples of things. Mm-hmm. Um, through me, people can get the books and the DVDs as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, um, and that's from smarthorses.co.uk. That's correct, yeah. Yes, okay, excellent, great. Um, okay. so there's lots and lots of different ways that people can learn from me. And um, as I said, I, you know, I, I help people by email as well. I help awesome. people on the phone. Um, so whatever suits people, if, if they're having a problem, you know, take some video of their horse. Mm-hmm. Send that over to me. I'll have okay. a look at that, and I'll give some feedback and advice. And oh, I love that. That's so cool, Amanda. Thank you so much. I, you know, I'm loving what you're doing here, and I'm loving that the whole nature of training and our concept of training in the old, you know, traditional styles is evolving as it needs to um, to invite our animals to be participants in their own training. Yeah. To you know to to engage with us mentally and emotionally and 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 physically, um, you know, it's it's just it's so brilliant. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing your heart with us, and thank you, of course, for your love for animals. I know you're helping to make our world a better place, not just for us, but our four leggeds too. And uh, I think Absolutely. I think we're good. So ah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm loving it. Okay. Well, um, so everybody go check out Amanda's website at smarthorses.co.uk and uh, go have, go do something fun with your animal today. (laughs) Okay. All right, Amanda. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valheart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valheart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life.